It was a pretty big story that Jeff Elliott had come back from the dead. That might sound like an understatement, what with the general lack of real-life zombies out there. But he wasn't one of those. He had just come back from the dead. At least, for a little while. Obviously, when the world found out, this strange little case became very big. The greatest scientific minds swept through St. John's to try to prove this all actually happened. Religious zealots declared the event a sure sign of the apocalypse, and a new crop of telephone hotlines surfaced claiming you too could contact your loved one for a short time. Five ninety nine a minute. Other long distance charges may apply. But by then, Jeff was already gone for a second time. Jeff wasn't a big deal at all prior to his death. He was a musician from St. John's who generally mixed with the blur of the scene in town. His songs drifted out of half-broken PA systems and into restless, drunken crowds for years. Of course, that all changed after he died. Suddenly, fame happened. There were reissues, remixes. His album won a Juno. People who had not seen him in life yearned for him after death. They yearned for the last show. And, strangely enough, this one time, they got what they wanted. Is he single? Jeff can't be back. I mean, zombie singer, songwriter? Oh, he's gonna play. What do you think? Dan? I never met Jeff. It's strange to think that, since we lived, worked, and played within a few streets of each other most of the time. The closest I ever came was a conversation I overheard one rainy day. Look, Jeff, man, I don't know what to tell you. You don't write for drunks. Just about them. It wasn't even that special. But for some reason, it caught my interest. But lately, man, you, you seem depressed. Like there's something that you want that you can't have and you don't think you'll ever get. I agree with that reviewer calling it uh, James Taylor Icono Pop, but it does lead directly into Spin Street, which is obviously wicked. So. That's Alex James. It makes sense that he's opening. He was probably Jeff's closest friend from what I've heard. I've seen him a few times, and he's good. But how do you open this show? I guess I know the answer to that. Jeff's success story, if you can call it that, goes like this. He recorded everything he did in a tiny apartment on Bates Hill using a digital 8-track he borrowed from a friend. His girlfriend Tina sent some of his music out to large labels around the country, where, of course, no one actually listened. Perhaps it was Tina's cover letter, which read, This is the best music you will ever hear. After he died, Tina called up the one label that actually did respond, Sunrise Records out of Toronto. Don't worry about that disc, she cried. There won't be any more. He's gone. And hung up. This was great news for a record label. They decided Jeff's disc was brilliant, and the ball was rolling. Incidentally, the A-track he used went on eBay for 4000 bucks to someone in Mexico last year. Actual retail value? $349. Everyone, may I have your attention? May I have your attention? This is the moment you've all been waiting Holy for. shit, here we go. Without further delay. Jeff
what can you say about a show that has become such a legend? I'll just tell you the facts. He played the hits. The ones we learned after he died. When he sang the dark woods to an awestruck and quiet crowd, I saw girls in the front turning to one another with tears in their eyes. He didn't speak though. There was nothing but the songs. He remained mostly expressionless through the applause, which was hard to imagine simply because it was genuinely overwhelming. But the emotion absent between songs was present in the actual set, with each song somehow more scorching than the last. The more I listened, the more I understood that it had always been there. I just hadn't seen it before. At least, not in such an important way. His words rattled in my ears, and when it was over I thought the entire place might rattle itself apart as the audience roared. It continued until he walked back on stage three long minutes later. He didn't bring his guitar this time. He just stepped up to the mic. What do you want? It's like there's something that you want and you know you'll never get. I'm just wondering what that is. I want people to hear this when it matters. Right now, not when it's too late. He said the same thing to end his last show, and then he was gone. Again. What can you say? I don't think there's anything left to say. Interesting encore, huh? I don't think I like his spoken word stuff as much, but... What now? Well, still pretty early. Even for a Monday. We can head down the road and see what's going on. Sounds good.